Friday Night Lights is sponsored by Garland Shelton Auto Group, Centex Roof Systems, and Optimum. Well, congratulations. You made a great choice joining us here for week eight of Friday Night Lights. Players Only Edition, I'm Ben Peck, leading you through the highlights tonight. Justin Woodard out in Knoxville with the Aggies' big game against Tennessee for Texas A&M coming up tomorrow. Nicole Sheeran out at our game of the week, and that is where we begin. Two contrasting styles with the high-flying Madisonville Mustangs. Only one loss for them to a top-10 Columbus team, mind you. On the other side, the Robinson Rockets. Pretty explosive as well. How about five and two on the year, including an all important one and start in district play and the Rockets doing pretty well. I'd say under new head coach Chris Lancaster looking to spoil Madisonville's first league game of the season, but Madisonville all business from the jump. Ty Williams under center downfield to Jaden Simpson. Get off me lays out for the touchdown stinks. Go up 10 nothing after a field goal, but the Rockets are ready to answer the call. Hand off to Stephen Knight in Houston. We have liftoff. The Rockets go the distance. Robinson all of a sudden knocking on the door. 10-7. Second quarter. Stangs, though, ready to run wild tonight, at least in this first half. William fires it out to Tristan Whaley, and he is all gas, no brakes, tight rope. Not only avoiding the sideline, but avoiding Nicole Sheeran. 17-7 Madisonville, but the Rockets aren't finished just yet. Austin Marshall is back for the kickoff. The boys in blue get the ball, and he's going rocket mode. Activated, hits the turbo, weaves his way through tra traffic, and 81 yards later, he is into the crib. 17-14 Mustangs at the half, but how about this? Mustangs pull it off 27-14 with the late touchdown. Here's Nicole Sheeran after the game. Well, it may be Friday the 13th, but the Stangs weren't spooked by Robinson. Final score from Rocket Field 27-14. And Madisonville takes home our Week 8 Game of the Week trophy. Congrats, guys! I love you, Mama! He loves his mom. He loves his mom. All right, Coach, so question for you. Question for you, Coach. So earlier this week you said, you know, your season's kind of like a TV series. There's a season, season one, season two, season three. Your first district win on the board tonight against the Tough Rockets team. I mean, how does that feel? Yeah, <laughs> big sigh of relief for sure. Uh, you know, uh, starting on the road with our district play. Uh, Robinson, much improved football team. They've really got it going over here. Really super proud of these guys and our defense and, uh, you know, the uh, fourth down staying inside the goal line down there where we kept them out. And it was back and forth all night, right? You went into the half with the lead by three. This is a Robinson team who pounds the rock, pounds the rock, pounds the rock. What do you see from your guys defensively, but also offensively as well? Yeah, you just got to stay consistent with the schemes. Um, they're going to limit your possession. So offensively, when we get the ball, we knew we had to take charge and, and put points on the board because they and, were going to limit us. <laughs> <laughs> and there was one guy who kept moving the chains all night. Where is he? Where is he? There you are. All right, so how did it feel for you out there? You kept pounding that rock. Robinson, an elite defense, but it didn't seem to bother you. Um, the motivation of my teammates and how hard, and how hard we go in practice. And, and what's, the, what's the next step after, after tonight? District Championship. Get ready for Gatesville. 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 All right, one at a time, right? 1-0 every week. Well, Madisonville hits the road back to where they came from with a big win on the board, but I'll send it back to you guys. All right, love that, Nicole. District champ, still the goal, but as they said, one game at a time. Well, we got a score update here. Class 6A, Temple and, uh, Temple and Hutto both looking for their first win in district. But look at the hungry, hungry hippos. 52-31 lead at last check in the fourth quarter. We'll stay in that district now. Midway hosting Copperas Cove. The Panthers 2-5, and five, but both wins in district. That's where they count. 7-0 Midway. How about the freshman, Lathan Wistenton up the middle for the 21 yard score and they are rolling. But here come the Bulldogs just outside the red zone. Micah Casson to Daniel Isquerdo. Stopped just short though. But oh no, bad snap. And that is recovered by the Panthers. Cannon Clendenin, the one there. Panthers take over. Let's move it down, move it down the field. Ty Brown. He's just, he just bulldozes people. Stiff arm, he's a quarterback, <laughs> playing like a linebacker. In for the touchdown, Waco looking like they're going to get a big win, 45-13 in the fourth. 
5A Division 1, a &M consolidated two straight wins after losing their district opener. First quarter taking on Leander. It's Lions and Tigers. How about Trey Taylor going all the way down on the stretch play? And he is just out inside the 10-yard line. Let's go Tyler Poling to the air to Peyton Bjork. P5 with the touchdown. Tigers rolling in this one later on in the quarter. Will Hargett hands it off to Trey Taylor. He's going all the way in for a score. Number three says, hey, I want six on this one. Later on, Hargett. This time, another handoff to Taylor, and he is gone to the end zone. Big win. 70 burgers, 72 nothing over Leander. Let's go out to Colleen, home of the Kangaroos, taking on the Colleen Ellison Eagles. My guy, Danny Cervantes, but his team was rolling early on. Sydney Holland, QB keeper. And today I learned the Eagles actually had the same celebration as Chris and Lindsay. I swear on my life, after every show, they're doing this in the studio. 7 nothing, Ellison on top. Still in the first quarter, back on offense, short pass to Tavion Johnson, and he could go all the way, but oh no! Fumble through the end zone. We think that was Kenya Ford forcing the fumble, so it's still 7 nothing Eagles. Remember that with what I'm about to tell you, how this game went down. On the other end, Ruse in business, Roderick Norman puts some air under it for to Corey Ladoris. Snags it for the touchdown. This game is in double overtime. All knotted up, 28 all. Let's go to District 4, 5A Division 1. Some scoreboards uh, for you. Thursday night matchup between Shoemaker and Waco High. Gray Bulls with a shutout, 42 0 victory. University and Lake Belton also in action. University win over Elgin. Lake Belton 45 7 over Granbury. And Seastat rolls over Glenn, 49-19. Well, we're just getting started here on Friday Night Lights. Up next, we've got more action from Class 5A and 4A. Keep it here.
Welcome back. Quick score update for you. Colleen takes down Colleen Ellison in double overtime 34 28. We'll keep it moving with the highlights 5A Division 2 in Bryan. The Rudder Rangers started off 0 2 but bounced back nicely. They just had a three game win streak snap in Huntsville last week, but hands full against number three Montgomery Lake Creek tonight. Lions up 7 0. They hand it off to Elijah Nizy Rutten and he runs it in for the one yard score. Makes it 14 0 Lions. Rangers trying to answer back. Making some plays. Hand off to A.J. Morrison. Makes a couple guys miss, and he is down into the red zone out at the 13-yard line. However, the Lions defense holds strong, but we've got to show you some Rangers points. Santiago Lugo puts Rudder on the board 14-3, but uh, they just go back to Nazi Rudden, pounding it into the end zone. Lions up 21-3, and they get the win 38-3 over Rudder. Class 4A, China Spring, good at football, but you might not know, also very good at baseball. Celebrating the state champs from last year, ring ceremony before the game, and quarterback Cash McCollum not wasting any time with the firepower here. Touchdown pass to Grayson Martin. Flicker the lights, 7 0 Seastat later on, tied at 7 in the first quarter. McCollum, another bomb to Martin, and it's just looking, he says it's looking too easy, but not so fast. The Pirates have their moments in this game, moving the ball. Bryson Rowland runs it in for La Vega. But just keep letting it fly if you're trying to spring. <laughs> McCollum, another one, a deep bomb to Kyle Barton. And at last check, it looks like China Spring leading 52-49, though, in the fourth. We'll keep an eye on that one for you. Let's go over to the Brazos Valley, Navasota, looking for a win over number seven, Iowa Colony. And uh, Iowa Colony up 7-0 early. Carson White dropping back, throws it deep to Antoine Martin, Jr., making it 14-0. However, the Rattlers, they go down 21 0, but they start to battle back a little bit, make it a little bit interesting. Artavian Rutherford, he is going to break a tackle and go into the end zone for the touchdown. 21 7, Navasota on the board. Second quarter action now. Same score. Hudson Miner, the quarterback, going to keep this one. Finds his way into the end zone. Good fight from Navasota, but ultimately they come up short to the Pioneers 37 21. And Lampasas, the Badgers get a 43-24 win over Taylor. Good for them. They improved to 6-1 on the year. Got a quick timeout coming up here, but next we'll check in on some smaller schools. Martin, Riesel, Milano, and more. That's all coming up next.
Hey, I want to fill you in on that China Spring La Vega game. Cash McCollum quarterback run touchdown to give China Spring the lead 52 49 with 49 seconds left in that one. Now we'll check in on class 3A for the first time tonight. Anderson Shiro has put together a pretty impressive resume. Six and one. They're only lost to number five Newton and bounced back last week with a 34 13 win over New Waverly. Uh, Warriors though tied the game here with a nice touchdown pass, but that's when the Owls get to work. Jarvis Haynes, nice little run and they're just they got their Haynes on. ASO does the Anderson Shiro Eagles, so they are going to hand it back over to Haynes and he's going to go in for another touchdown. Jump ahead to the second quarter. Anderson Shiro going to work once again and pounding their way in for another touchdown. Let's check the look at the score in this one. I believe they get the win. Anderson Shiro does. Yes, 47 over Warren. All right, let's go to Riesel where Marlin Comes in trying to take down the undefeated Indians, 6 and 0. But how about this? Starting off with an onside kick, Eric Ramos recovered by Marlin. So the Bulldogs go into work. Roderick Suters throws to Mario Hopwood, weaving his way through traffic. That's a nice little gain. And later on, Suters going to play action to Demarion Butler in the corner. Touchdown. First touchdown of the game, Marlin, next possession. They're going back to the pass game. Suiters, a little drop down to Jameer Hartsfield. He's got a big game. This one was 14-12 at the half, Marlin, and Marlin does hold on for the win, 28-12. Sneaky good matchup here, Milano and Iola, both teams four and two, but Iola, only two wins last year. First year head coach, Rex Sharp, but this is a well-oiled machine. The Bulldogs, Adrian Garrett, get off of me. All the way to the end zone, seven nothing, Iola. We go later on in the first quarter. Dropping back to pass now. Tyler Elliott. And he's looking deep on the rollout. Looking, 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 looking. Blake Bennett is there for the score. Another touchdown for Iola. And the Bulldogs continue to just bulldoze their way into the end zone. Another touchdown. This time, Cullen Walton. How about Iola? Big win over Milano. Again, only two wins last year. They improved to 5-2 and two with a 47 victory over Milano. Well, that is all the time we have for you on Friday Night Lights. Be sure to join us next week under the lights for week nine, can you believe it, of high school football. We only have three weeks left of the regular season, and then we start up by district play. And, of course, uh, with your college matchups, Baylor off tomorrow, but Texas A&M at Tennessee. Be sure to keep an eye on our website for updates throughout the weekend. That's going to do it for Friday Night Lights. Hope you have a great night.